Hello, Fritz. The Bears are who we thought they were. The Bears. The Bears. I am the great Cornholio. We'll see what happens. Uh, the playoffs? See, no. Oh, Sean McDonough and Jay Villas. Coots. Um, can you play a song? <laughs> Something cool. Put my mic on! I'm calling both games. Oh, 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 you so oh. oh. Goes down the field for Smith. Oh, he caught it! Seattle. We're getting ready for Cincinnati. Welcome back to the Mike's Madness YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to do some, uh, as I said yesterday um, in that video, we're just going to kind of be getting to a little bit of everything today. Um, you know, we got NFL to talk about. We got uh, um, uh, college and NCAA, uh, men's basketball, and something that happened regarding NCAA uh, football. And the Olympics as well. Uh, I'm going to get into that. And um, there was also a, a quick headline about uh, the MLB. Uh, Met one of the Mets starting pitchers, Noah Syndergaard, uh, tore his UCL uh, elbow. I believe that's where that is. Um, and if we even play the 2020 MLB season, he'll be out for the uh, he'll be out for the year. So. Uh, you know, again, with with how everything is uh, progressing, sometimes you know you wonder: Are we even going to have uh, any sports for the next few months? So, um, given that, uh, well, if the 2020 Major League Baseball season actually comes to uh, you know formulates and and, and actually happens, uh, Noah Syndergaard will be out for the whole year. Or will be out for the season rather uh, with that injury. So, you know, you got that um, uh, to, to look out for if, uh, again, if if we even have a, a, a 2020 MLB season. And, you know, sometimes, I mean, this is like what day, is it day 10 without sports? No, this is like, today's Wednesday. It's like day 14 without sports, isn't it? It might be like thirteen or twelve. I'm not. I'm not too sure. I lost count. But during this, you know, two weeks of no sports, you kind of get the feeling like, are we ever going to go back to sports? Like, when? When does this all? Um, when, you know, when does this all just, you know, end? <laughs> when? Uh, when do we get back to sports? It's a question that I definitely. Uh, ask myself uh, a couple times uh, a day. I'm just like wondering when, you know, when does this all get back? When, when does this end? When do we get back to sports? Because, I mean, it's just like you can't even leave the house, and it's going to be a while before I think we can open up the quote unquote non essential businesses. So, you know, you think. You think then, well, if we can't even open non-essential businesses, how are we going to have sports? And maybe you say, well, we have it with, with no fans, but that's going to be up to the, um, the, the, the sports leagues, obviously. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but it's just a question I ask myself a couple of times a day. And um, if you have a thought about that, comment section below, put that in there. You know, when do you think sports... Uh, we'll come back. When do you think we'll see a return of that? Because honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Um, you know, I could sit here and I could try to, you know, you know, come up with an answer. But I just, it's, it's one of those things that I truly don't know when we'll see a return of NBA, MLB, NHL, anything. Um, but we'll get to and the Olympics as well. We'll get to the Olympics in a bit. Uh, but starting out in the NFL, the um, well, first before we get into the uh, Los Angeles Rams new logo, uh, this happened. This uh, I had the notification uh, last night before I went to bed. Uh, Roger Goodell ordered the NFL teams, all NFL teams, to shut down facilities for at least two weeks, and that will. Uh, be effective starting 6 p.m. Uh, local time. So it's not going to be the same time 
Like, if, for example, if the Ravens facility shuts down at 6 p.m. tonight, um, it, the the LA Chargers facility out west will not shut down at, at 6 p.m. Eastern time. You get what I'm saying? It'll be 6 p.m. Uh, uh, Pacific time or whatever, or Mountain time or whatever it is out there. It'll it's again local time if you know what that means. I'm just trying to explain that to you. But so there you go. And with with the facilities being shut down, you have to wonder how this will affect the NFL off season. Uh, you know, free agency has been wild already, but you have to be wondering what um, some teams are, are are you have to take into account this whole you know not being able to really travel and how it's affecting free agency because take a look at the Patriots for example Tom Brady no longer New England right um, I mean well, actually let's just start there Tom Brady free agent um, when teams sign a new player they have to go through a physical and some teams are a little more uh, lenient on results um, and how that impacts whether or not they're going to sign them or not. Like in the MLB, it's the same principle. And the Orioles always have that, you know, pending physical deal where it's, you know, it, it's, it's, I don't know. Sometimes it seems like they uh, take advantage of, of the physical and, you know, they see one little thing in there and they're like, Oh, nope, can't sign him. But, Anyway, they had to, the Buccaneers and Brady uh, agree to a doctor in New York. And you have to be wondering, would Tampa Bay have uh, had, had normally looked for a doctor in, in, in Tampa or, or somewhere else in Florida? Instead, they had to agree to a doctor in New York that Brady knew, I, I'm guessing. But, you know, already you can see there, this is starting to affect things a little bit. And another thing with the Patriots, they, they recently signed uh, Brian Hoyer, and we'll get to that in a bit. And Hoyer used to be on, was on the Patriots um, a couple years back. And you have to be thinking, you know, did they sign him over another free agent quarterback like Flacco or Dalton or Newton or Winston? Did they sign Brian Hoyer over those other options because they already knew him and they already knew that, you know, hey, he's been here before, he's fine with the whole uh, physical thing? Because another thing that recently happened was that these uh, doctors and the NFL said we can't be doing the, the physicals anymore because pretty much every doctor is – is occupied with the you know pandemic going on, so you have to be wondering: Did the Patriots sign Brian Hoyer because they? I mean, obviously they knew him, so that's whether or not we're in we're in the midst of a pandemic or you know, they probably would have gone with him just for the sure fact that you know that he knows the team and he knows the system and he's been there before. But you have to be wondering if there was any extra value placed on that because of the circumstances and you know I, I think it's interesting now that we don't see newton or winston on it on a team yet uh and i think had we not been in the middle of a pandemic where the the physicals are are the the situation there is a little different than normal i feel like we wouldn't be in this spot where we're sitting here thinking you know well where's everybody going to go so you know, the NFL is trying to push through this. Um, you know, some, some GMs wanting the NFL draft to be pushed back, but the NFL has no plans to do so. They're, they're, they're staying, uh, staying put on the fact that they're going to have the NFL draft in April. And, you know, I just, I just don't know if you can really, really uh, know who you're drafting. You know, they have the, these pro days and all these other events where the, the, I mean, even the combine, there were multiple coaches and GMs and such that didn't go because of this 
Corona deal. Even back during the combine, this was going on where where they weren't showing, the coaches weren't going. And you have to be wondering, I mean, obviously you can watch the combine on television, whatever. But I feel like for coaches, there's an extra, there's an added value of being there. And, and you know, front office guys as well, not just the coach. But I just, you know, with, with everything that's happening, you can't leave your own house, pretty much. <laughs> How do you really know? I mean, sure, you can always send... Uh, you know, video to the to the team that's looking to draft you or whatever, and and even in free agency as well, you can always send videos of workouts or whatever. But if you're f shutting down the facilities, I I just I'm not really sure how you can you can you know sign guys and and draft guys in the draft knowing that they're the right fit for your team and the right fit for your system. I just don't think you can effectively sign players and sign or and draft players out of college that that you know fit in your system. And I think NFL free agency hasn't really tapered off as much as some might have thought because I mean, you play these guys, right? You play them. Some some of them you play two times a year. Um, you need, there's always film that you can watch, and you see how they fit in other team systems, and you can compare that to your system. So free agency is not that big, of um, it, it won't be taking that big of a hit. But th for the draft, these guys have not played NFL games yet, so. I just don't know, especially for teams trying to find a quarterback that fits their system correctly, or, you know, fits their system well. How do you, how do you confidently draft a guy, especially a quarterback, when you haven't visited or, you know, had them work out for you or, just many of the other things that go on during the pre-draft stage. With so much of that limited, and some of it not even happening, I just don't understand how these teams are going to really be able to draft guys in 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 a hundred percent. Just, just you know, it just, it just doesn't. I just, I'm very unsure. I guess you could say. I'm very unsure of how teams are going to be able to to draft players in a month when so much of the the, the pre-draft processes have been shut down. I just don't or you know canceled or whatever or limited. I just I'm not seeing how it's how it's working and not pushing the draft back. You know I, I feel like that could be a mistake. Uh, you know, I'm just, again, I'm very unsure as to how we can confidently say that there's going to be a draft seven rounds or whatever it is from a month from now. And we don't even know if, if this is going to be, if this whole pandemic thing is going to be resolved or somewhat, uh, you know, Somewhat, uh, I don't. I don't want to say resolve, but somewhat. It, we we know where we're going. You know what I mean. And and that's the other thing. President Trump wants to have the, you know, the economy. You know, all the the businesses and the non essential stuff and all that. He wants all everything to be open by by Easter, and that that uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci said it's it's, you know, that flexible could happen. You know, he didn't seem to like, oh, yeah, that's that's doable. It was more like, well, I mean, I guess. So I just, you know, if we're not even having the, the non-essential businesses and, and, and what have you, 
not even confident that that'll be open by Easter. How are we going to have an NFL draft a month from now where you are drafting guys to play for your team and, again, lead your team, really? I just... it. I'm not seeing the how it's going to connect. I just, if, if, but if, uh, you know, I really think the NFL needs to push this back. I really do think the NFL needs to push the draft back a month, at least. Because again, I'm just not seeing how, how you can really, uh, how you can have a draft in, in a month. I just not I'm just not seeing it. So uh but if you have any thoughts on that, again, anything you have thoughts on that I say in the video, comment section below. It's uh great. So moving away from that and getting into the Rams new logo. Uh you may have seen it, and in the last NFL video I had that uh well not not the last one, but the I forget which one it was. It might have been the the Monday takes video, I believe, where they had the, the leak logo. Um, it, it was basically, you may remember that if you've seen that video, uh, it, their new logo is basically the same as that and they just tweaked it a little bit and here it is. And again, as I said, um, I mean, it's the same logo. So my thoughts don't really change as it looks kind of like the Chargers logo and it looks like the St. Louis, you know, St. Louis arc, except obviously it says LA, but uh, the, the Rams head doesn't look bad. I think that's, that's, uh, you know, I like it. It's, it's not too bad. The, <laughs> it just, I don't know. It's, it's, it, it's just kind of bleh. Just, you know, could have done better. Um, it was leaked and a lot of people are saying that they didn't like it and, so why not why not fix it? Why not go a different way? Why not say, okay, look, people are not liking it. Let's do something else. Let's go a different direction. Uh, no, I don't I mean it's whatever. Uh but this this Twitter account made a better a better logo. And it's, it took them about 10 minutes, and here it is. Uh the, the one on the left is the Ram set from the previous picture. And the one on the right is the new logo that the Twitter account made. That is that that's pretty good. I like that one. If you're gonna have the little the little swoosh deal with the LA, if you're gonna have that, incorporate it in the in the Rams head. You know, you take the the LA, the A kind of looks like it's part of the ear, and then you have the the Rams, the the horn is incorporated into the LA logo. I think that's great. I would love I you know, it's still not the best logo ever, but it, it's better than what they had. And I'm not saying I hate it. I'm not saying I hate the, the logo they have now. I just feel like they could have done better. I feel like they didn't really, you know, I feel like they didn't take the task of making a new logo too seriously. They just kind of said, well, this, this is okay. It, it was like... You know, bare minimum effort on, on a group project or something like that. I just, you know, eh, could have done better. But this is the, you know, the new logo. Well, I mean, the, the one on the right isn't, but the one before was. But uh, with any new change and any new, uh, anything new, there's bound to be jokes about it, right? And I'm, you may have figured this out, but the obvious one is you got to put Trump's head in there, right? I mean, come on. Any, I mean, just it's 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 uh, it's first grade. <laughs> I mean, I've seen the, the 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 Eagles logo. Somehow they put Trump's head in that. I mean, the Falcons. They, it's it's like anything. I, that again, that's that's too easy. It's too easy. Putting putting a Trump Trump in it. I mean, come on. Too, too easy. <laughs> uh, but then there's another one here that I saw. It said, the new Rams logo looks like it's from a TV show about pro football, and they didn't have the rights from the NFL to the logos. <laughs> and, you know, they're right. That is exactly what it reminds me of. 
I mean, after I read it, then I thought about it. I was like, you know, yeah, that's, that is what it reminds me of. Um, it's like that, uh, what's that, the episode of The Simpsons where they had the, the two football teams and they were they were depicting the Patriots, but they obviously they didn't use that. So it was like, I forget the nickname they used, but it was something different. And uh, but yeah, that's what that's exactly what it is. It's like it's like GTA how they have all the cars that are the that look pretty much the same as as real car brands, but they don't have the rights to the name, so they come up with their own. That <laughs> that's exactly what that is. Uh, so yeah, drop your uh, thoughts below. What do you think about the new Rams logo? Uh, do you like it? Are you giving it a big thumbs up, or are you giving it a thumbs down and you don't like it? Are you do you think they did a terrible job on it? Let me know your thoughts below. I'd love to see what you guys think of the new Rams logo. Now getting into moves from the uh, you know free agency and trades and, and what have you. The Panthers were uh, busy. You know they, they had a new coach come in, their new fr front office, new everything. So uh, a lot of moves bound to be made. Uh, they recently signed um, former XFL quarterback PJ Walker. Now the Panthers had some some quarterbacks. Um, you know they had to figure some stuff out. They got a lot of of work to do because before the PJ Walker signing, they had signed Teddy Bridgewater. You may remember they had Kyle Allen and they had Will Greer. Those are three quarterbacks. That they had, and who can forget Cam Newton is also on the team. So before any of this had all happened, I mean, you got five quarterbacks there. That no team needs five quarterbacks. Uh, a very very few teams even have three. So some moves had to be made. Some moves bound to be made, and we get into. Uh, a trade between the Panthers and Redskins. The Panthers traded Kyle Allen to the Redskins for a 2020 fifth round draft pick. Um, you know, that's a, that's a respectable move. The Redskins have Dwayne Haskins as their starter quarterback. They had Alex Smith, who, you know, has that, that dreadful injury. I, not guessing that he'll be back anytime soon. It's very similar to what happened to Teddy Bridgewater. And, you know, you remember the 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 time, the, the long span of time that, that that there was before he even got back to any uh, football action. And then you had um, Case Keenum, who the Browns signed. So, you know, you need a backup. Kyle Allen is a pretty good backup. And... They had a uh, Panthers that just signed him to like a one year deal before then, so you can't just release him because that would be a pretty stupid move, eating the the money after you just signed him. So, you know that's a uh, that's a that's a respectful trade. I I don't mind that. I don't have anything. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and then we had the whole debacle about Cam Newton, and they released Cam Newton. The Panthers did. Two days ago, I believe. It was, no, it was yesterday, I believe. I'm not too sure. Um, but this real and some people are coming out and saying, "Whoa, this is surprising! What is happening?" The the new the 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 Carolina Panthers released Cam Newton, their 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 starter quarterback for as long as we can remember. What? It it doesn't surprise me. Okay. The reason is. Honestly, it seems like the whole Matt Rule and new front office and new administration, that relationship with Cam Newton seemed to kind of get off to a rough start. It, it, it seemed like they kind of got off, started off on the wrong foot and just kind of thought, you know, hey, this isn't going to work out. So I feel like they were trying to kind of push Newton out slowly and they're trying to get him out little by little. You know, maybe the previous, uh, I want to say, I want to use the word administration, said, hey, look, this guy is a problem. You don't want to be dealing with him. Proceed with caution. You know, they, they I feel like they slowly pushed him out again. Signed Teddy Bridgewater. 
that then they had Bridgewater, Allen, and Greer, and Newton. So, you know, you kind of think, where where's Newton going to fit in that? Are they going to release Greer? Are they going to tra trade Will Greer? Are they going to trade Kyle Allen? Well, after the Bridgewater signing, they told Newton that he could seek a trade. And you may remember, Cam let it, uh, said, hey, I never asked for a trade. What, why, what do you, what? <laughs> and again, when you, when you hear the word, the phrase, allowing him to seek a trade, you may be thinking, and it's, it's, you know, nothing wrong. You're thinking, okay, that implies that he wanted a trade. Well, no, he did not want a trade. He wanted to stay right there in Carolina, where he has been for so many years. So the tension is starting to build there, if the tension wasn't building before. Then they signed P.J. Walker. And again, as I said before, you had Walker, Bridgewater, Allen, Greer, and Newton. Five quarterbacks. No team is, again, as I said, very few teams even have three. So then they traded Kyle Allen, and they were, again, looking to trade Cam Newton. Uh, they, they were, they looked to the Bears. I'm not really sure. I mean, the Bears probably said, look, we, we got Trubisky and we got Nick Foles. We don't need a third substantial name in, in Cam Newton because then we got some, we got to move some parts around here. And, you know, I, I think, well, not that I think I know, uh, the Bears were not looking to move on from Trubisky. They were trying to do what the what the Raiders are doing with Derek Carr and bringing in Mariota to kind of push him a little bit and give him some competition. As did the uh, the Titans with Tannehill and Mariota. That's what the Bears are doing with this on it with the Nick Foles and Trubisky. They're they're using Nick Foles to kind of maybe motivate, uh, challenge Trubisky to be better. And I think if you sign Newton, it's you kind of are, are sending the message that you're giving up on Trubisky, and that's not what the Bears are about. So the Bears said, "Nah." And then the Chargers uh, were another team that the Panthers were trying to trade Newton to. And there was also some rumors that the Panthers were uh, talking to the Redskins about. Um, possibly trading Cam Newton uh, to the Redskins uh, when they were structuring the Kyle Allen trade there were talks that you know hey do you uh, Newton uh, could be traded instead and you may not understand where I'm about to go with this but I'll explain it before I do before I get into it Ron Rivera is the Redskins coach right now he used to be the Carolina Panthers head coach and if Riviera, Ron Riviera, wanted Kyle Allen over Cam Newton, you know something must be up. You know Ron Riviera, I, I keep saying his name wrong, Riviera, if you know him, Riviera, wanted Allen over Newton, then something must have happened. There, he must know something just isn't right. Either whether the relationship between the two wasn't the best, didn't end well, or maybe he just knows that Newton's got a bit of an attitude issue, with which he does. Saying, hey, look, we don't, I don't want that again. So if his own coach, his own former coach didn't want him on the new team, that sends a message to me, I think. But, you know, take that as you may. Uh, Cam Newton was released and looking to uh, looking for a job. He's on the market, and the uh, Panthers also had signed wide receiver Robbie Anderson, who was on the Jets, and he was a pretty good. Uh, he had a good year with the Jets, and I think with Bridgewater, with the signing of Bridgewater, the signing of Anderson, and can't can't forget they have Christian McCaffrey, who's pretty good, who's really good actually. Panthers are starting to put together something, you know, something uh, something pretty good. And then you take a look at their division. You got the Buccaneers, who just got um, Brady. You got the Saints. That's self-explanatory. The Falcons, who always pull a couple of victories out of their butt, and they still got some, some building to do. 
you know, Julio Jones, Matt Ryan, uh, they just signed Todd Gurley. Um, they're starting to build something to where they're not going to be a joke. And now you got the Panthers starting to put together a little something. That division's going to be, <laughs> that division's going to be something. And quickly, just here, I, I, I got to say, I'm thinking about Tom Brady specifically in this. In I wonder how he's going to do in this division because you take a look at previous years and he kind of, I mean, Tom Brady was going up against who? Geno Smith, Ryan Tannehill when he wasn't doing, I mean, he was okay with with Miami, Todd Rod Taylor with Buffalo, uh, Sam Darnold who didn't have anybody really around him, um, just not not very big not not a, a great competition not something that was tremendously difficult and now you take a look at what he has going up against him and it's you got Drew Brees with a bunch of guys around him Matt Ryan's and his team starting to build something around him and Bridgewater who's pretty pretty decent and either putting some some uh, some good players around him how I just wonder how will Brady do? I don't know if he'll really have the success and the uh, the greatness that we're accustomed to out of him. And I'm not saying that Tom Brady can't do it, and I'm not saying he can't succeed, but I'm just saying I wonder how he's going to do in a tougher division. It'll be interesting to see, especially with a new team. Uh, it's just uh, you know I feel like it'll be it'll definitely be interesting. Um, but do you think do you think Brady will uh, succeed in Tampa Bay? Put put in the comment section below. That would be great. Uh, but <laughs> getting into Robbie Anderson, that's what he looks like without his helmet. And it, I can't help but but look at Robbie Anderson and and think of Sideshow Bob. I, I really, <laughs> I mean, I don't I mean. Uh, what is going on with his hair? What is that? It looks like. Uh, I mean, really, I don't, I, I just, what, what is that, really? I mean, what is that? It just, I, I just want to know what inspires you to style your hair like that. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that is one of the weirdest haircuts I've ever seen, or hair that styles I've ever seen. And again, every time I look at, at that, his hair, I think of Sideshow Bob from The Simpsons. I think it's, I think it's the same guy, really. I, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anyway, so what now for Cam Newton? Will the Patriots get him? I, I really don't think so. I really don't think so because... The, the word word out of New England is that they they really like what they have with Jared Stidham, a guy I'd never heard of till about three days ago. So I don't know what they're so confident in. So I'm eager to see what they're really looking, what they really see out of him. And they just signed Brian Hoyer, so I, I don't know if they'd really. I mean, unless they wanted to develop stidham and hoyer i mean a little i mean look hoyer's getting older so he's not like a young quarterback that they got to develop you know the word is they they've got the competition between stidham and hoyer so i just don't see how they're gonna how they would bring in a newton a household name a starter i just eh, you know i'm not seeing it so i say no i don't think the i don't think the patriots Will sign Cam Newton. Will the Chargers sign Cam Newton? And yes, that is a new logo. The Chargers uh, came out with a new logo. It doesn't look. It's not a. Um, it's not a total redesign, but it is a little, uh, a little update. Um, do I think they're going to sign Cam Newton? I mean, maybe, <laughs> because the Chargers did not go through with a trade for Cam Newton. And that tells me a few things. They could have A, been focused on the draft, or B, not thrilled with, you know, not obsessed with Cam Newton. Like, they didn't, they didn't feel that Cam Newton was good enough to give something up for him in exchange for him. 
And what I mean by that is maybe they didn't look to trade for Cam Newton because they have a top they have a top 10 draft pick and they're going to get a quarterback that way or they took a risk on Cam Newton. They said, you know, look, it's not going to be the end of the world if we don't get him. If we miss out on Cam Newton, um it's not it's not the difference between success and failure. But if we get him, uh, you know, there, there's ways to get him without giving something up in exchange for him. Because they probably took a look at the Panthers and said, look, they've got P.J. Walker, Teddy Bridgewater, and Will Greer. And they're looking to trade Cam Newton. If they can't trade Cam Newton, they're not gonna they're not gonna keep him. Most likely. And if they do, it's not the end of the world. Okay, we, we missed out on him. So what? But in the chance that they do release him, which is probably what they thought was going to happen, we can get him without giving something up for him. So the I'm not saying that the Chargers won't get him. And, and I'm not saying because the Chargers didn't trade for him that that means that they're not interested. They probably, I mean, if they are interested, it's probably just because... It's probably just because they said, look, yes, Cam Newton is good. It would be great if we could get him, but he's not worth giving something up for him. Because in the end, they're ultimately just going to release him anyway, so we can we can get Cam Newton without trading for him. And so that's probably why they didn't find any teams that wanted to trade for Cam Newton other than his attitude issues, other than his health, other than the fact that, again, it's not... He's he's not the greatest of all time. They're the the end result was they're most likely going to release him, and so teams probably said, "Look," I mean, they probably didn't say this to the Panthers, but when I said, "Hey, look," to the, uh, talking in, in their own discussions, probably saying, "Hey, look, they're going to release Cam Newton anyway. Why would we trade for him when we can sign him as a, as a free agent?" So. The Chargers and Cam Newton could possibly still happen. I see that still happening. And, and here's the thing. You could go out and sign Cam Newton and still draft a quarterback as well. Uh, draft a quarterback like Jordan Love. Uh, you know, you don't have to get the best quarterback out of the draft. And they're not in a position to get the best quarterback in the draft. In, in Tua or, or Burrow. So you can get Jordan Love or um, uh, Herbert from Oregon. And develop him behind Cam Newton a little bit, or or something of the sort, like they like the Browns did with Mayfield, how they how they drafted him, but put him but didn't start him right away. The Chargers could do that with with Newton, or again they could also do it with Jameis Winston. This isn't just Cam Newton. I mean, again, you got Andy Dalton, you've got Cam Newton. I mean, obviously you got Newton, but other than Cam Newton, you got Flacco who's out there. You've got Winston who is, is very well, uh, just as much of a, a candidate to be signed as Cam Newton is. And you've got, um, did I say Dalton? Yeah, I think I did. But you know, anyway, you got him. So again, why not the Patriots? As I said, they signed Brian Hoyer, and they seem pretty confident in the fact that they're going to have the competition be between Hoyer and Jarrett Stidham. So I'm not seeing how they're going to draft, or the, I'm not seeing how they're going to uh, pick up another quarterback. They might, and if they do, I would see them. I wouldn't see them picking out a a big starter like like Newton or Winston. I would see them more going into a into a Dalton or Flacco kind of uh, kind of path. If they do, in fact, go and take a quarterback out of free agency. But Cam Newton, my ideas for where he could end up. The LA Rams. And it's not going to happen. I know that. But the reason that I thought of the LA Rams when it came up to Cam Newton is because, look, honestly, I'm not a big fan of Jared Goff. I'm not. I've, he's overhyped, I feel. I don't think he's that good. And sure, you can say, oh, well, they, he, they went to the Super Bowl. So did the San Francisco 49ers, who Garoppolo 
not not the best. I think you bring Cam Newton in, and you can have that same, um, you know, Raiders Titans kind of competition thing. Maybe motivate you both guys, Golf and Newton. Um, but again, I don't. That that won't happen. I don't. That's not going to happen. That's just uh, an idea that I had. The Denver Broncos. Um, you know, look, they just signed Melvin Gordon. Flacco's out, and you have that guy Drew Locke, who's a young quarterback, but maybe develop him a little bit under Cam Newton. I mean, you know, look, right now, the AFC West, obviously, Chiefs are, are ruling that division. Raiders are kind of middle ground, and the Chargers are trying to get back to middle ground. So that that kind of second uh, second place in the AFC West is, is very much very much so up for grabs. I'm not sure. I I mean, again, most likely none of this will happen. The New York Giants. The hype is around Daniel Jones. Everybody thinks he's the best. I, I, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm not buying the hype yet. I don't think Daniel Jones is that good. I think he still needs some developing. Why not develop him behind Cam Newton? And again, all of these teams that I'm saying that kind of you could quote unquote develop a quarterback behind him, it goes to the same for, for Newton or Winston. They could pick and choose which one they want. But again, this neither of neither of these three teams will go out and sign a quarterback in free agency. It just is not going to happen. Uh, and then again, the, the Chargers, as I said, it it it, uh, it makes sense. And here's the other thing: the the Miami Dolphins are are not totally out of out of uh, out of the weeds either, just because they could draft Tua. And, you know, I think you will most likely have two of Fitzpatrick and Rosen compete for the starting job. Uh, and that makes sense. That's that's very... Um, yeah, that, that, that's, that, that's how it's going to be. So I don't, I don't see the Dolphins going out and drafting or in, in, uh, getting Winston or Newton. But... You know the Dolphins are another team that it comes to mind. I it I don't think that'll happen though. I'm just, I mean, I'm just trying to think of other teams where I could see the possibility of Newton or Winston going to. I just I just don't know. I mean, in a year or two, depending on what Ben Roethlisberger does, the Steelers might be there, but right now I don't think. They're going to take uh, New Newton or Winston. Anyway, uh, other moves from Monday. The Giants signed Deion Lewis, running back. Uh, that's a good move. Uh, the, a good secondary running back to put behind Saquon Barkley. Uh, the Patriots released kicker Steven Gustowski. Interesting. Now, that'll be a, a substantial name. A household name out in free agency this year. Um, any team that struggled with kicking, go out and get him. You know, I know he's definitely getting on the older side. But uh, look at Adam Vinatieri. The guy's like what, seven hundred <laughs> years old. I mean, Gostowski uh, will definitely go to another team. Uh, I'm not sure what team will will will. Will take him, but uh, definitely will be uh, a, a a big move. Uh, definitely will be a uh, again a notable move for whatever team picks him up. So that'll be something to look out for. Uh, getting into Tuesday moves, the Ravens and Jimmy Smith agree to a one year deal. Uh, Peyton Barber headed to Washington on a two year deal, and the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars sign. Tight end Tyler Eifert to a two-year deal, which is is a is a pretty good move. Tyler Eifert is a good, is a really good tight end. He uh, all those years with the Bengals, 
uh, definitely no no joke and no scrub uh, whatsoever. So I think that will be uh, that'll be a good move. Uh, that'll that's uh, he'll be uh, good with the, with the Jet Jacksonville Jaguars. And getting into more moves from Tuesday, Brashad Perryman signs a one-year deal with the Jets, filling that gap where Robbie Anderson left, filling that, uh, filling that uh, vacancy. The Green Bay Packers signed wide receiver Devin Funches, substantial uh, good move. The Cincinnati Bengals signed linebacker Josh Bynes to a one-year deal, and that is probably going to be one of the most underrated moves of free agency. Because Josh Bynes came in with the Ravens last year, and I was really uh, pleased with what he had done. I think he did a really good job in, in his work with the Ravens, and I was, again, pleasantly surprised uh, with what he did. So that'll be – he's uh, a, a good player, and I think, again, that'll be one of the more underrated moves of free agency as – I mean, again, it, it sometimes it comes down to coaching, but Josh Bynes is uh, look out for him. I think it's gonna he's gonna be uh, uh, I think he's gonna be pretty good at Cincinnati. And then the uh, Seattle Seahawks signed Philip Dorsett to a one year deal, the former Colts and Patriots wide receiver. So moving on from that, and we get into NCAA basketball news. As we had four uh, four sophomores de uh, declared for the NBA draft, um, and then this morning a uh, a freshman center from the Pac-12 declared as well. We'll get into that in a bit. Uh, but first, we got Trey Jones from Duke. Uh, he, again, the, the the well, four out of the five names are sophomores. Uh, Trey Jones, in his two years at Duke, totaled for 809 points, 377 assists, and 258 rebounds. Uh, not bad for two years in college, and he'll be declaring for the NBA draft. And it's funny, I was uh, when I heard that news, and I heard that he was only a sophomore, I was kind of uh, taken aback by that, because I feel like he's been at Duke forever. And to think that it's only been two years was, uh, was kind of surprising to me, but... Uh, in any, at any rate, he will uh, will look out for Trey Jones in the NBA draft. Minnesota senior center Daniel Oturu uh, also declared. He had exactly 1,000 points in his two years as a Golden Gopher, as well as 595 rebounds and 122 blocks. Florida State Devin Vassell uh, also declared again, another sophomore. 529 career points, 203 rebounds, 70 assists, 60 steals, and he started in all 30 games this season. Again, another guy to look out for in the draft. Iowa State, Tyrese Halliburton, uh, again, sophomore, declared for the NBA draft. He had 574 career points, 267 assists, 249 rebounds, and a field goal percentage of over 50% each of his two years as a Cyclone. And also this morning, uh, freshman center Onyeka Okongwu from USC declared for the NBA draft. So again, five names to look out for uh, in the draft, whenever that may be. I mean, I'm, at this point, again, I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure when the, when the NBA draft will happen. Because I mean, we haven't even finished this NBA season yet, much less get into get into the off season and next year. I, so I'm not even sure when this all will happen. Uh, but but when it actually does, those will be five names to look out for in the draft. Uh, other uh, get into the transfer portal, NCAA men's basketball. Uh, DJ Carton from Ohio State, he is transferring. Uh, has not made a decision yet, but he is in the transfer portal. And that'll be a, um, it'll be a look, look out for wherever he goes. Uh, whatever team manages to land him, will be getting a good a good player. Charles O'Bannon Jr. from USC to TCU. 
Jalen Carey will transfer from Syracuse to... We don't know yet. He hasn't made a decision either. Um, Kobe King will be transferring from Wisconsin to Nebraska. And Kobe Webster will be transferring from Western Illinois to Nebraska as well. And Nebraska had some issues. I think they suspended a few guys uh, towards the end of the season. And in their uh, the, the game in the Big Ten tournament, they had like two or three guys from the football team that suited up and played basketball. So... And I believe there's a few people, a few players rather, that are transferring from Nebraska. So they're definitely in need of guys um, <laughs> to come to to Nebraska because they're they don't have any depth right now. So definitely, uh, you know, again, not the, not the biggest names, but uh, they are replacing some vacancies in their in their ro in their roster. Sharif O'Neal transferred from UCLA to uh, LSU. And Seth Towns transferred from Harvard to Ohio State. And there are other names. There are other guys that are transferring, but those are just the, the ones that uh, caught my eye. Now, you may have heard about this little, this little incident with quarterback Trevor Lawrence, uh, Clemson quarterback Trevor Lawrence, and a GoFundMe page. So Trevor Lawrence, again, Clemson quarterback and his girlfriend started a GoFundMe page to help coronavirus victims. However, the GoFundMe page was shut down due to concerns over violating NCAA rules, uh, particularly the rules that uh, athletes can't can't uh, profit off their image, name, or likeness, and. Uh, that or or not not just profiting but um, fundraising as well. They can't fundraise using their name, image, or likeness. So there was a um, a source that said NCAA reached out to Clemson University about the kerfuffle and told them the NCAA will allow any will allow uh, university discretion on charities that support the community during this pandemic. Meaning that Cle it was up to Clemson to decide whether or not Lawrence should, uh, or whether or not Lawrence will be able to uh, go through with the GoFundMe page, or or if he could, or if he uh, will be required to shut it down. However, later on on Tuesday, the NCAA came out with a statement saying that it did not contact Clemson University directly about the matter, and that it did not even take down Lawrence's GoFundMe page, which, which. I, I question, I, I have a few questions here. So, well, I mean, after that whole statement, the, the GoFundMe page was reopened. And I, I don't know, like, if, if the NCAA at first did take down the page, fine. Rules are rules about the fundraising and profiting and what have you. But... I mean, look, I, did GoFundMe come out and say, hey, this, no, don't use our website because the NCAA rules say you can't do that. Maybe. I mean, that, that's, that's, a, that's a, um, a reasonable solution or a reasonable um, idea. But there was never a statement from, from the GoFundMe organization that said, yes, we were the ones that came out and, and shut down the page because we uh, didn't want the uh, – we didn't want the whole, um, you know, uh, violations, the rules. We didn't want Lawrence to violate the NCAA rules. Or we didn't want to get wrapped up in any violations. But I feel like it, it's very hard to believe that the NCAA did not say, did not step in and say, hey, you can't do that. I find that very hard to believe just because of, of previous NCAA deals. I mean, look, the other reason we can't even play a blanking video game. So, you know, to say that they have never been involved in stuff like this and never shut down things like this before is is not a is not an argument that will hold any water. Not a fluid argument. But here's the thing. I, again, I feel like the NCAA did shut down the the Trevor Lawrence GoFundMe page for the coronavirus victims. So here's the thing, NCAA, don't act like you didn't shut the page down. And don't act like you didn't contact the university about the issue. 
And, and essentially, again, don't act like you're essentially stepping back and saying, hey, we have no part of this. We don't, we don't know what's going on here. We, we, well, go fund me. What's that? No. Don't act like you have no part of this. And don't act like you have no idea what's going on. And don't put this on the, on the university for shutting down the GoFundMe page. When in fact, because you can't do that. You know why? Because it was the university's athletic department that restructured the GoFundMe page so that it could function again. So you can't say that the that it was the university that shut down the GoFundMe page because they're the reason that it's still up. They are the reason that it is functioning. So to say that they're the reason, you know, to, to, to put it on them, to put it on the university that the GoFundMe page was shut down is is uh, is is lack, for lack of a better word uh, garbage because the university's athletic department again is the reason why the page is back is why the page is back up and functioning again, not why it was shut down in the first place. And the NCAA always always fails to to do the right thing time and time again and i'm not talking about march madness of 2020 that was that was inevitable that was a no brainer to cancel or postpone that but the ncaa even found a way to to mess that up because they didn't release a bracket. They didn't give the teams that earned a spot in the in the in the, in the tournament. They didn't give those teams the the uh, the satisfaction of seeing their team in the bracket. They even messed up that. And another thing that they've messed up so many times before is 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 scheduling i mean i can get into that but they 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 always i mean again the ncaa just hey they mess things up time and time again and to, to sweep things under the rug like that and kind of disassociate themselves with this issue is ridiculous Take ownership. Stand up. Nobody else is saying, "Yeah, yeah, it was it was us. We uh, we shut it down in order to uh, uh, avoid uh, violation of NCAA rule." The GoFundMe organization, as 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 I know, as of now, like as they haven't made a statement. The, unit, the Clemson University hasn't made a statement that's saying that they shut it down. Trevor Lawrence hasn't come out saying he shut it down. So, I mean, the NCAA came out with a statement saying, did come out with a statement saying they didn't shut it down. But here's the thing. There are two possible organizations or, um, I guess you could say, uh, administrations or whatever that would shut down things like this due to violations of rules the university and the ncaa and you can't say that it was the university because again as i just mentioned it was the university athletic department that restructured the page so that it could function they did not shut it down because it violated rules they restructured it after it was shut down so that it could be back up to help communities And that was after the whole um, university discretion deal. So the NCAA was definitely involved. Don't come out and, and try to tell me that the NCAA wasn't involved in this. Because the NCAA has their foot in everything. They, 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 they have their nose in everything. They, they're, you know, they're not the innocent party here. They're not the ones saying, you know, oh, you, you can't. Uh, you, you cannot effectively say that they did not 
have any part in this. It's the NCAA. Of course they had part in it. So I think it's absolutely ridiculous that the NCAA will come out and say, we had no part in this. I mean, I mean, there's a problem there. If you have no part of this, why didn't you? Why didn't you go in there and try to help out and say, hey, look, this guy's trying to help whoever's shut it down. Say, hey, look, this guy's trying to help out the community. He's not trying to profit or fundraise off of his image or likeness. He's just trying to help the community. If you're saying you didn't have any part of it, then there's something wrong with that too because – Why not? You're the NCAA. Why didn't you try to help out? So to say that you didn't have any part of this is ridiculous. Because if you truly didn't, then shame on you then. But if you did and and, and you're saying you didn't, <laughs> that's ridiculous and terrible as well. Because it's not the truth. So, moving on from that, and the getting into the Olympics, uh, the Olympics were postponed, and that was uh, announced yesterday. And uh, in a statement that said, in part, uh, the, uh, the Olympics will be rescheduled to a date beyond the summer of 2020, but no later than next year, uh, next summer, uh, 2021. Um, yeah, here's the thing. That's obviously the right call. Okay, because we can't go out in our own town. We can't go out and sit down for a slice of pizza. So there's no way that athletes all around the world were going to go out and train furiously and ridiculously hard for, for the Olympics, for the Olympic Games. And then later on in July and June or what have you. Go travel to Japan for this event. There's no way that that could, in in I mean, in anybody's right mind, there's no way that that could happen. And that was pretty apparent. And that was ultimately going to be what happened. And and some people were saying, you know, hey, w what's the holdup? Let's, I mean, this is this is uh, this is first grade. Let's go. Let's come out with a statement. It's not that easy. There are a lot of different parties involved here. I um, mean, you, you think about it, all the investors that are involved in this multi-billion dollar event, the athletes from around the world, and there were many countries, I think Canada, United States, um, the list goes on. There was a whole bunch that said, hey, look, we're not sending our athletes out to the Olympics if you do indeed have it, which is fine. That's fair. And again, maybe maybe come July this year, we look back and say, what a dumb decision to postpone the Olympics back in March. They had no idea that we'd all be in the clear here. Or again, I mean, th we, th that's a possibility. Um, another thing is you could say, right call, 100% right call. But here's the thing. It's not about what, what the world will be like in July. It is about right now because... Again, we can't even go out for a slice of pizza, but you're going to have these athletes all around the world train as hard as they do for this event. There's no way that it could happen. There's no way. So you postpone the event, give these athletes the time to uh, spend time with family, be healthy, and when everything is back to normal, I guess you could say, quote unquote, normal, then you come back and say, okay, we're going to train for the Olympics and we're going to have the games. Because here's the thing, it's not like the NBA where, or, or the MLB or the NHL where you can just get on Skype or get on Zoom and say, hey, we're going on a little hiatus here. Um, we'll, we'll be back when we can. Sorry for the inconvenience. Thanks. No, this is not... It's not like that. This is, again, a multi-billion dollar event that involves athletes who train ridiculously hard. 
These athletes are from around the world. And, and sure, you can say that postponing the Olympics crushes the dreams of, of so many people, so many athletes. But it doesn't even begin to compare to how it would, uh, to, to how holding that event and, and uh, keeping the dreams alive of those thousands of people and those hundreds of athletes. It doesn't even compare. You can't even start to compare how that would affect millions upon millions of people had they held the event and if they had gone through with the processes be before uh, in training and all the little parades and the celebrations and what have you. It just, you know, there's no way that we could have gone through with, uh, there's no way you could have gone through with this training. And, and as we, and as uh, some, some discussions have, have uh, formulated about the NBA and uh, the same principle uh, lies herein with the MLB and the NHL as well in the fact that when this whole thing kind of washes over, When the coronavirus has been cured or slowed down or whatever, we can't just say, all right, back to NBA, let's go, uh, Cavaliers, Wizards tonight at 8 p.m. No, these guys are not really working out. I mean, I mean, they, they probably are, actually. Check that. They are working out. But the, the – uh, you, you can't – guarantee that it, that they'll be in game shape it's going to take some time for these athletes to get back into game shape again you can't just it's not like a video game where you can just turn it on and play you got to train you got to get back into shape for it there's a difference between being in shape and being in shape to play an nba game out there on the court with none other people it's going to take some time. So, you know, have, having this, this postponed is, is, you know, till, till next year is, is exactly the right call because you got to take time and, and train and get back into Olympic shape again. And again, you can, you know, people are going to say, hey, they should have acted quicker on this. But you got to take a step back and understand that this is not the NBA and MLB and NHL where you can just have the commissioner come out with a statement saying, we're going on a hiatus, no games until further notice. It's much more complicated than that. And again, some people were, were freaking out saying, you know, this is ridiculous. They're still planning on having the Olympic Games. What is wrong with these people? No. This was ultimately going to be the end result. And that it was going to be postponed or canceled. It just... it Again, with all the different parties involved, it was going to take some time to come out with a, with a statement and with a reasonable decision. So... For those that, that are saying that they needed to act quicker on this, you know, stop acting like this wasn't the end, this wasn't gonna be the ultimate result. It was only a matter of time until we got this statement. And uh, that brings us to the end of the Wednesday edition of Mike's Madness. I uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you did enjoy, a thumbs up, a like, whatever. Uh, subscribe as well for more content. And uh, if you have any thoughts or sports takes or questions, you can go ahead and put it in the description below, or and not not in the description, in the comment section below. Uh, that would be much appreciated and always welcome. 
And other than that, I will be back in the next video tomorrow. I'm out.